Today we're going to look at the process of importing VBS3 terrain onto the VBS world server, which is then available in VBS4. So the way this works is that you need an instance of the VBS world server installed on your local area network. And obviously you also need an install of VBS3. Now this process is detailed in the documentation, uh, VBS3 to VBS4 terrain conversion tool. And that's what we're gonna do in this video is just follow along here in the documentation. Now in my setup here, I actually have uh, my laptop, which we've just remote desktoped into here, running the VBS world server. Uh, and I can check its status by running uh, VWS underscore status dot exe. So we can see the world server is running on my laptop. Now, as per the instructions, the first thing you need to do is connect to the world server in a web browser and download this zip file. Uh, we can do that. Uh, you can see here for me, the URL is 192.168.1.196. Uh, this will be different for you depending on the computer where your world server is installed. And then we can just download this zip file. When you open the zip file, you'll see that it contains uh, some folders and you would simply extract those folders directly into your VBS3 installation. And this will enable your VBS3 instance to export its terrain to the VBS world server. There is one additional thing we need to do prior to starting the conversion process and that's described here in the documentation. Uh, it's important to place custom content PBOs into the VBS world server and also your VBS4 clients, assuming that your terrains include custom content. Uh, so the terrain that we're going to be converting today is going to be this Telluride terrain. And you can see it's got all of this custom content. These 3D models have been extruded by Terrasim. And so we're going to need to load those models onto the VBS world server before we start the conversion process. And that's very easy to do. All you're going to do is uh, in your local VBS3 install, you'll find that custom content. So in VBS3, it's gonna be in my content add-ons, and it's actually going to be this PBO here, which contains all of that custom content for this terrain. And then on the VBS world server, you're gonna to go to services, VBS4, you're going to go to my data, blue, and content. And you're simply going to copy the custom content PBO directly into that folder. Uh, so I think it's about 300 meg, so it's going pretty quickly here. So now that that custom content has been copied onto the world server, we're ready to start the terrain conversion process. Now you're gonna start up VBS3 using the launcher just in the normal way. There's no special command line parameters. Uh, and once you've got VBS3 up, then you're going to uh, identify the terrain that you wanna convert. One important point to note is that you need to use VBS3 20.1 or newer uh, for the terrain conversion to work. So here you can see the Telluride terrain that we're going to uh, convert. We're going to load that up in the VBS3 mission editor. Uh, and so here we are again, looking at that same terrain. Now to convert the terrain, you're going to go to file, convert to VBS4 terrain. And if you remember in the first step when we extracted the zip file into our VBS3 folder, that was actually installing the plugin that makes this option accessible. And you'll click on this and you'll be presented with a dialogue like this. Now there's a chance that you might get a warning message that is asking you for a license. Now, if you see this, don't panic. You simply need to contact support at bisimulations.com or support at terrasim.com, and we'll just give you a license to run the tool. Now in future VBS4 releases, we'll just include this license. Uh, it's completely free of charge, uh, but if you get this message, just contact us for that license. It's very quick to add that license using the license manager. And now the trick here is to enter the IP address of your world server, and that's gonna be the same IP address uh, that we used earlier to access the file server. You can enter in the IP address here and click verify and the server's ready. Now, all of the default settings should be totally fine. We might have a look at those later in uh, the video, but for now we're simply going to click convert. And what will happen is that uh, VBS3 will export the terrain data for this specific terrain to the world server and prepare that data for, uh, for use in VBS4. 
So I'm going to stop here and come back when this process has finished. So the terrain conversion is now complete and we can go ahead and shut down VBS3. Now we can see here on the world server that our new files have been created. That's what you can see here. Uh, you can also see the directory where they've been saved. And this is the terrain from VBS3 that has been converted and is now sitting on the world server. Now there are two things we need to do before we can actually see this terrain in VBS4. And the first thing we're going to do is simply restart the world server. And we do that by stopping the world server. And this only takes a couple of seconds and then starting it back up again, effectively restarting the world server. Uh, this won't be required in future versions of the world server, but in the current 20.1 release, uh, you do need to do a restart for this terrain to stream to the VBS4 clients correctly. But it only takes a couple of seconds. There we go, that's done. The world server has been restarted. And then we also need to copy the same content file with a custom content for this terrain from VBS3 to the VBS4 client. And it goes into the same directory that it went into on the VBS world server under VBS4. And now that's been done, we're ready to view the terrain in VBS4. Now we can start up VBS4 using the VBS4 launcher. We're going to start VBS4 online connected to our world server and we're going to launch modules. And it will only take just a few seconds for VBS4 to load here. And once VBS4 is loaded, we can search for our terrain. There it is. And the camera will pan over to that location and we'll see our imported VBS3 terrain in VBS4. We'll just come down and have a look at that now. We can see that we have all of our custom content imported, all of our buildings. Uh, we've got our water features here, as you can see, our roads. Uh, and in this particular example, we're actually using the VBS4 biome to, uh, to populate the area with forests. And of course, we have all of the detail that you would expect from a VBS4 terrain here in this biome. Now you might be thinking, well, that's all well and good to have that data on the world server, but what if I wanna run my VBS4 offline, which means not connected to the world server? And you do that by using this particular option in the launcher. Well, all you need to do is copy the terrain data files from the world server computer to your VBS4 clients. And you just need to make sure you're copying it to the same folder. So here on the VBS world server, you can see that our uh, terrain files have been saved into the services VBS4 my data blue earth directory. And all you need to do is copy that, uh, copy it to your local VBS4 uh, folder, just like I just did just here. It'll take a little bit of time because there's a fair bit of data there. Uh, and once that's copied, we can start VBS4 offline and we'll see this terrain in VBS4. We'll do that right now. And VBS4 has started up here. We can tell that we're running in offline mode because we're not connected to a VBS world server. You can see this icon up here is different. And we have our VBS3 terrain imported into VBS4 here. Um, and you can use it as if you were connected to the world server. Now it's worthwhile talking about one more thing and it's not just the terrain insets that you can copy to your VBS4 clients. Uh, you can actually copy the global data as well. So when I installed uh, VWS back in the last tutorial video, I elected to uh, also install world data. Now that is stored on the world server in the data blue base earth folder. And here you can see geometry rows and vegetation removal. And you can simply copy these folders to the same directory under your VBS4 in, on your VBS4 client, uh, data blue base earth. Uh, and if you wanted global roads, for example, here in your VBS4 uh, client, then you could simply copy global roads from here directly into uh, here. And if you're a little short on space on your VBS client drive, you don't have to copy the entire world's geometry roads. Uh, you can actually just copy uh, parts. So if we're going to go into global geometry here and into global buildings, 
um, you know, South America here, you can copy simply the areas of interest uh, by latitude and longitude location. And when it comes to roads, it's a little bit similar. You'll go into global roads, you'll see that there are six different files here. And these are simply uh, ordered by Earth CubeSide, uh, which basically uh, is, is described here in this, uh, in this image. You know, if you were working simply in North America, you only wanted the North American roads on your VBS client, you would copy only the road file number five, uh, which is uh, this one just here. The last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is customizing the converted terrain. And this is covered in detail in the documentation. You can change the way that surfaces are handled, roads uh, and, and vegetation and so on. And this is all described just here. So you can really tweak the terrain to match VBS3 as closely as you need to in the conversion process. Uh, so for example, if we look at my converted terrain, you can see that I'm using the VBS4 biome mapping. So this is forestry data that's used to map the entire world. And we have the biome here that's, uh, that's been created for North America. Now in this example, when I did my export, I didn't select to uh, export the biotope objects. And so the biotope objects are the exact location and type of all of these trees that you can see here in the VBS4 terrain. So what that means is that in our converted terrain here in VBS4, uh, trees aren't exactly in the same position. Now this maybe isn't a problem for you. It really depends on what you wanna do with your converted terrain. Uh, if you wanted trees to be in their exact location, then obviously you could have uh, selected when you did the conversion, biotope objects. Uh, it does take a long time. Uh, this is a very big terrain with thousands and thousands of trees. Uh, it took about two hours actually to, to do the conversion when I selected biotope objects. Um, but we'll have a look now at, uh, at what that does when I select that option. So this is what the converted terrain will look like if you extract the exact position of all the biotope objects, so all of the vegetation. So you can see here, compared to the VBS3 terrain, uh, trees are in exactly the same position. You can see a tree down here on this little point of land. You can see that there are two trees together up here to the right. Uh, now the reason there's a road here in the VBS4 terrain and not in the VBS3 terrain, you can see that there's no road over here, is because we're using global roads. We're not using the road center lines that were extracted from the VBS3 terrain. Now, what VBS4 is doing in this particular example is doing uh, the closest match. So the, the VBS3 trees are not being kind of used here. We're taking the closest matching VBS4 tree. Now you can customize all of this. I'm not gonna go into the detail, but there are various configuration files where you can specify specific uh, 3D tree models to be used instead of the VBS4 trees. Uh, if for some reason you need to do that. But we do feel that the default settings, as you can see here, will meet the vast majority uh, of needs with regards to VBS3 terrain being converted to VBS4. So that ends this tutorial. We have run through the process of importing a VBS3 terrain into the VBS World Server and viewing that in VBS4. Uh, please consult the documentation for the full uh, explanation of the process and feel free to try it yourself using your own VBS3 terrains. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at bisimulations.com. Thank you.